Those accounts were 10 accounts in three banks, accounts legitimately opened by him, and there were funds that he kept saving, where he was keeping his savings in the U.S. That's a lie, because his salary was $2,400, and at one point he deposited $661,000. At another time, he deposited $1.2 million. That's $1.8 million. How do you save $1.8 million when your salary on a monthly basis is $2,400, which is actually just $38,000 plus per year. And he stated it himself that he didn't have any other source of income. So where is the savings? As I speak with you, if you want to know whether there is a criminal charge against somebody, you must have a complainant. So you will see the state versus so so and so person you must see that and then you must have a charge number you must have a charge number if there's a charge against anybody there is no charge number in those documents there were two charges that's another lie 18 usc 1956 and 18 usc 1957 which borders on money laundry and financial fraud and then there was a charge number the charge number is staring you in the face 93c4488 that's another lie from festus Kayamo. If you look at those documents too, Asiwa Jubala Tinubu was not mentioned as a defendant. People have skipped, people have made, they've skipped that. It was only account numbers that were mentioned, and at the end of the day, they just said account numbers in the name of Tinubu. That is all. Not that Tinubu was a defendant. It was account in his name. Not, not him. Those accounts were sued. Not him. For the action in Rome. That's another lie. The prayers of the United States attorney was that due notice be given to all interested parties to appear and show cause why forfeiture should not be decreed. Who will come and appear? Is it the account number? So that's another lie. There is no charge. There was no charge. There was no indictment. There was no criminal process. It was a civil, purely civil process against those accounts. There indeed were two charges, 18 U.S.C. 1956 and 18 U.S.C. 1957, which bordered on money laundry and engaging in money transactions in property derived from fraud. Now, there was an affidavit by somebody called Kevin Moss. Kevin Moss is just a normal prosecutor you see. That's another lie. Kevin Moss is not just another prosecutor you see. Kevin Moss is a senior special agent. And aside that, the work he did will boggle your mind. These four sections from the document outline that he filed 18,300 files. So that's no joke. What they did in the case of Ashwa Dibola Ahmed Chilubu was therefore to file what they call an interim process for for feature. It was not a final process. That's another lie. There were five documents and the last of them is the final for feature, the final decree. You can see it there. So there was a final decree starting from the verified proof of for feature to the warrant of seizure down to the settlement down to the final for feature. So that's another lie. The Kevin Moss, all those the, the positions you see there about narcotics and all that, it was not a judgment of the court. It was an opinion of a prosecutor trying to convince the court to issue a forfeiture order. It was not an opinion of a court. Another lie. These are seizure warrants that were issued to first of all freeze the account, and then there was a final forfeiture that was issued, which is also an order of court. So to say it is speculative and it is not final, that's another lie. And so it was a presumption. These processes are processes made of made presumption. So they found monies in his accounts. They said, well, they needed to come forward. And in that affidavit of Kevin Moss. Again, another lie. This is verified complaint of forfeiture. They were not speculation. He backed it up with an affidavit and he got a warrant of seizure and then got settlement and got final forfeiture. So it is not mere speculation. This is another lie from Festus Kayamu. They said they interviewed Mobile. Mobile said, yes, this man is a treasurer in the Mobile. But they said, no, those funds are not from them. But they, they, they confirmed his status, not as a criminal, but as a respectable employee of Mobile. It is in the affidavit of Kevin Moss. This is a potential lie. Because the Mobile is talking about is Mobile Oil Nigeria Limited, which is not Exxon Mobil, because many people seem to think that it is Exxon Mobil. It is not Exxon Mobil. In fact, the company has changed its name now from Mobil Oil Nigeria Limited to 11 PLC. Look at, look at paragraph 38 of the affidavit by Kevin Moss. I want everybody to look at paragraph 38. 
After the rigmarole of trying to find out whether the artist, the, the account, the money, where the monies came from, whether they were you know, linked to drug and all of that, it was all speculative. They came to the conclusion that the proceeds he got from his, the, the tax, uh, the, the deposit he made there, he made there what they call, uh, what these bankers normally call investments. He kept the money there and he was getting profit on the interest. They said he did not pay, he had not paid tax on those interests. That is all. So it was not like a deliberate so, act. So That's another lie from Festus Kiyamu. The whole charges that were brought against Bola Ahmed Tinubu were USE code 1956 and 1957 and they bonded on money laundry. To say that it was tax is a deliberate lie. A very, very big lie. In fact, the forfeiture order did not include that it was for tax. This is the forfeiture order. The final order. It stated that it is for narcotics trafficking and money laundering. Those were the two charges. So this is another lie from Festus Kayamu. Yes. Would you liking the settlement that Bola Tinubu had with the, with the court in the United States at the time over these monies as a sort of a plea bargain? No. A plea bargain, you cannot build something on nothing and expect it to stand. A plea bargain must arise out of a criminal charge. Like I said, there is no charge, no con nothing anywhere, nothing, nothing like a charge anywhere. That's another lie from Festus Kayamo for Bola Ahmed Tinubu. There were two charges, USC Code 1956 and 1957, which bordered on money laundry and using proceeds illegally gotten. Going from that, you see now that there was a plea bargain. This is stipulation of compromise settlement, which is plea bargain. So there was a plea bargain. And in the plea bargain, initially, it was supposed to be $1.8 million that was seized. But eventually, they just fined him based on the charges that he was charged. Because he was charged with two codes violation. USC code 1956 and USC code 1957. And if you look at the punishment for those violations, it says not more than 500,000 US dollars. That was why only 460,000 US dollars was deducted from the account. Because that's what the law spe speculates as fine punishment for the violation of the law. The other option would have been imprisonment, which I'm sure that Tunubu would not have wanted. So there was a charge, there was a plea bargain, and there was a fine, which is actually the forfeiture of the 460,000 US dollar based on the law. You yes. established that there was a forfeiture, but if there was a, a forfeiture yes. uh, that was made, and uh, that kind of forfeiture is still subsisting, and it has a criminal nature that has not been set aside up to date. No, no, it? no, no. A forfeiture, you see, that's why I say you should take a paper and a biro. So it's a, this is a lecture class for you. A forfeiture is not something hanging on your neck. It's a permanent settlement and everybody you will shake your hands and go your way. The forfeiture in this case, which proves that this is another lie from Festus Kayamo for Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the forfeiture in this case is based on code violations for 1956 and 1957. The punishment for it is either fine of not more than 500,000 US dollars or imprisonment. And so Bola Ahmed Tinubu was given a fine, which is the forfeiture settlement that we, he got and it was $460,000 there was a forfeiture, which is actually a fine, based on the two charges that were brought against him. I refer you again, paragraph 6, page 2 of the settlement signed. In that paragraph 6, they were even begging Ashiwaju. They said that, look, please don't proceed against us again. This is a final settlement between us. Go your way, we go our way. That's another lie from him, from Festus Kayamo. Festus Kayamo, as a senior advocate of Nigeria, knows that there is always indemnity clause in such plea bargains to prevent you from saying, or your children from saying, oh, the money that was seized from you was actually responsible for the death of your relative, and so they want to sue because of that. It's just an indemnity clause. That is usual. In fact, not only for plea bargains, that it's normal. So coming to say that they were begging him, that was just a blatant lie. Out of the nine, out of the ten accounts, 